If you haven't already, show some support by hitting that like and subscribe. So it's been a busy week and I keep doing just a little bit more every day and I decided enough is enough and I need to finally fire out an update video. So the first thing I did was task the 8mm end mill to remove what was left of the sprue. This was fairly straightforward. I'm using an adaptive tool path with a 6mm depth of cut, a 1.2mm width of cut, and this is done at 4000 RPMs with a 0.055mm feed per tooth. This is pretty conservative, but due to the amount of stick out I need to clear the case, it's what was required. Next, I drilled all of the holes in the two crankcase halves. These holes were required to bolt the case halves together. I did this by peak drilling. Every 2mm, the drill retracts 0.25mm, and every 8mm, the drill fully retracts. This allows me to cool the end of the drill and clear any swarf. From there, I drilled the 12mm hole for the cam chain tensioner and tapped it M14. I only managed to snap a few photos of this as I did it on the manual mill and drill press at work as I couldn't be bothered programming the step and it's not all that interesting. Now we're back to the CNC mill to machine the mating faces for the cylinders. I'm using a large angle plate which makes setting the cases up pretty straightforward. I'm setting the angle plate up with a square which is also pretty straightforward. Now I think of it, I'm actually placing a lot of trust in my budget hardware store square as I didn't run a dial indicator down the angle plate. But I reckon she'll be right and there'll be nothing to worry about. Here I am making the cylinder base parallel with the table of the mill. Once this was complete, I would bolt the other half on and machine the two halves together. I made sure to remove the same amount of material from each cylinder base. This in turn meant both cylinders would have the same deck height. And here, I jogged the mill around manually while taking 0.2mm depths of cut until I had a clean surface across the entire face. I sped this footage up to 8 times speed so you didn't have to sit through the painstaking process of half an hour of checking, cutting, checking, cutting and so on. Next I used the trusty edge finder to set the datum for the subsequent machining operations. Once the cam chain tunnel was machined, the only thing left to do was spot drill and drill the 5mm holes for the cylinder studs. And the lower cylinder was pretty much a repeat of the exact same process, so I'll spare you all of the details. Although, I barely had enough room to carry out these operations as I was maxing out the travel of my Z-axis. And unfortunately, I did notice a small amount of porosity on the lower cylinder mating surface, but I don't think this is anything I can't fix by slathering it with a generous helping of Bluemax. And here I'm using my M6 tap to tap all of the holes. I'm using this random piece of crap I found in the bin as a guide. It works great. And I can keep the tap perpendicular to the hole. Here you can see the difference between the starting and finishing taps used to tap the through holes and the blind holes. And here's a sick montage of me Doing what I do best, tapping holes.
Here, half the studs are being put in so I can dummy mount the cylinders and take some clickbaity photos. And in goes the transmission, which I'd have you know, fits like a glove. And there you have it. So all that's left to do is the easy stuff. So I'm waiting on a reply from the heat treatment place about getting a crank pin hardened. Then all that'll be left to do is machine the oil pump recess, fit the cam chain tensioner, widen the lower cylinders, get a cam chain, make a gasket, and sort the electrics out, which shouldn't be too hard. See you next time, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.